We're in the book of James. In our journey through James, practical principles for kingdom living. James chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 12. When you find it, say amen. amen. James chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. <laughs> Blessed is a man who remains steadfast under trial. Why? For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Verse 13. Let no one say when he's tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. And he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted, watch this, when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Some person say his own lust. Watch this. Then desire when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. Are you in an entanglement? But I'm going to talk to you today about being tangled in entanglements. Inquiring minds want to know today, are you in an entanglement? That's the language and the lingo that Jada Pinkett Smith used when she described her affair with a father by a guy by the name of August Alcina. And on Red Table Talk, Will Smith confronted her about her relationship with August Alcina. And he said, she said, it started off by wanting to help him, wanting to get him healthy. She was concerned about his condition. And then she discovered that even though she wanted to get him some help, she found herself in what she describes and what she defined as a different kind of entanglement. Right, uh -huh. She had an affair, and she called it, Brother Gerald, an entanglement. Yeah. Inquiring minds want to know, <laughs> are you in an entanglement? Mm -hmm. Are you involved in something that you start, thought it started off good? All right, sir. Uh -huh. You had good intentions. But then you find yourself in an entanglement. The relationship started off good. You thought they were the best thing since sliced bread. You thought that they were your soulmate, but you find out that they were your cellmate. Because the reality is many of us here today are in some kind of entanglement. Maybe it's a financial entanglement. And you find yourself robbing Peter to pay Paul because you're like Jada Pinkett said, you find yourself in a different kind of entanglement. And I came to tell you today, this text is tailored to teach us. If you can uh, understand what James is helping us today, because James says, if you recognize the reason and what draws you to entanglements, you can avoid them. Y'all gonna help me today. Because the, the, the reason that you are in that entanglement, something drew you and dragged you to it. And we're gonna talk about that today. Y'all gonna, gonna help me today. Uh, you can't say amen, look amen. <laughs> Because in this text, it's going to teach us how can you tangle with entanglements? How can you avoid, like Jada Pinkett Smith, being drawn to a different kind of entanglement? Well, 
I came to help you today. Because James tells us, number one, if you're going to properly tangle with entanglement, I'm going to lift this up for you. He said you need to recognize the difference between a test and a temptation. Uh -huh. let, let me show you this in the text. Watch this. You got to recognize the difference between a test and an entanglement. Look what it says. Blessed is a man who remains steadfast that stands under the test. We talked about testing time a couple weeks ago and how God said, count on joy when you find yourself in the various kinds of tests. So the Bible, the Bible says God will test you. What God does is try to develop something in you. Remember we talked about how it's there. God uses tests for your maturation to grow you. He uses tests for your stabilization to make sure that you are steady and remain steadfast. But he also tests you because he wants to clean some things up in you. So God allows the test. But there's a difference, ladies and gentlemen, between a test and a temptation. Even though James used the search for the same word in the original language, he says, don't get it twisted, ladies and gentlemen. What God does, God does test you. But God never tempts you. Let me repeat that. Here he says, he said, James said, all of us go through tests, but don't get it twisted, ladies and gentlemen. When you're in an entanglement, that is a temptation. Now watch this. He said there's a difference between a test and a temptation. And the reality is, if you want to stand under the test, you can let that move you to a temptation. Let me help somebody. Because here's what happens when we're tested. When we're tested, there are other temptations. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Let me help you. If you are in a financial test, that'll cause you sometimes to try to go to the boat. A wind stop. And put your money in that one-armed bank. Because the reality is that test led to a temptation. Y'all ain't got it. If you have a marital test, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then you start looking at the woman at the job. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now y'all notice I didn't get no amen. <laughs> because the marital test leads to a marital temptation. You don't get along with your husband now. That's why when you go to the job, Watch this, or even to the church. Uh, you start looking. You start lusting. Y'all ain't gonna have to let Single folk can have a single test of loneliness. But that test of loneliness leads to a temptation in loneliness. And you'll find yourself grabbing any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Because a test can lead to a temptation. He said, now don't get it twisted. Here's the thing. When you find yourself in the midst of a temptation, not only do you need to recognize the difference between testing and tempting, you've got to also realize that when you are tempted, it doesn't come from the sovereign. Y'all with me in the text? Look what it says. He said, let no man say, when I am tempted, when I'm drawn away, when I'm tempted to do evil, in the midst of your test, don't say that God is doing it. Don't say, God led that woman into my life. Don't say, God showing me this person to test me to see if I'm going to fail. No, the source of the temptation, watch this, is not the sovereign. God is not the one that's doing it. He says, not the sovereign, but here's why I'm going to lose my friends. Because not as it does not come from sovereign. Why? Because it says that God's nature is that he's holy. 
Right. He's separate. Yeah. He's distinct. In other words, he cannot be tempted. Neither can he tempt no one. That's not how God operates. Come on. So when you get that little extra money from the cashier, and they know they didn't count the money back right. They'll say, God? You're trying to bless me. No, ladies and gentlemen, you know, God is not the source of evil. It's not the sovereign that brings the temptation. Neither is it once it is not always Satan. Because here's like, we blame the devil for everything. No? Everything is the devil. Yeah. Y'all heard about that story where one, one fellow friend of mine, he said he I heard about the story about that he went to this church one time. Mm -hmm. And he saw the devil sitting outside the church. And the devil was crying. So I walked up to him, Brother Bruce, and said, what's wrong? He said, man, they in there blaming everything on me. <laughs> because the reality is, it not only comes from the sovereign lifetime, it doesn't come from Satan sometimes. Here's what the text says. Here is where most of our temptations come from. Here's where most of our entanglements find themselves. Can I tell you what it is? Y'all ready? Yeah. It's from your own sinful self. It's right here in the text. Can I show it to you? He said, here's where it is. He said, here's where the source of entanglements come from. Watch this. He says this in the text. They come... Watch this, from your own, yeah. I like King James, yeah. lust. Y'all yeah. 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 with me? Yeah. It comes, no, the ESV says, it comes from your own, watch this, desire. Mm -hmm. Let me break it down for you. It comes from your own, watch this, Brother Bruce, heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a word there is, it, it, it comes. We got where the thermos from. Mm -hmm. Heat. Mm -hmm. In other words, where does your where does your entanglements come from? Mm -hmm. Whatever makes you hot. Whatever you run hot after. Watch out, man. Watch out, man. Watch out, man. Come on with it. Watch this. It's epithumia. It's heat upon heat. Yeah. 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 All right. See, y'all gonna miss y'all hot. <laughs> y'all like Mama Sadie. Y'all remember Mama Sadie? Mama Sadie was a Sunday school teacher, Mother yeah. Anthony, and, and Mama Sadie would, would, would always, she taught the children Sunday school. And what she would do is she'd all the children in front of her, and she would hear to say this. Mama Sadie, she said, uh, Jesus is all Mama Sadie needs. Yeah. Uh, Mama Sadie don't need nobody. Yeah. All Mama Sadie needs is Jesus. Yeah. All right. Children come back the next time. Yeah. Yeah. You know what she would say? Sit the children down. And say, all Mama Sadie need is Jesus. That's all Mama Sadie need. Yeah. Mama Sadie don't need nobody else. Yeah. 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 Well, one day before Sunday school, all right. the kids were walking by Mama Sadie's house. Yeah. And they saw a man walking out of Mama Sadie's house with shoes in his hand. So when she got to Sunday school that morning, little boy, before Mama Sadie got to the Sunday school lecture, she said, Mama Sadie, we saw a man coming out of your house. We saw Jesus coming out of your house this morning. So the reality is, some of us, if we hot, we just hot. So when we're hot at the various things, and the reality is, that's what entangles you. In other words, I know you saved, sanctified, full with the Holy Ghost, that with the burning fire. But sometimes you get hot. You may be, you may be hot after finances. Some brothers here, they hot after female. Some sisters here, y'all hot too. I don't care how much you fan yourself with that Martin Luther King fan. The reality is some folks, 
a plug. <laughs> now let me tell you about a plug. A plug is what we call a crankbait. Yeah. <laughs> now what I do is I put it on here. By the way, lures are interchangeable. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah. Depending upon what's biting. <laughs> So what I do is I use a crankbait, but what I got to do with a crankbait yeah. is I got to let it, I, I got to throw it and I got to let it drop. Yeah. Because when I let it drop, what happens is, is that it mimics a small fish. Yeah. It looks real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then once you buy it, <laughs> you find out that it's not. Yeah. 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 See, I use crankbait in shallow water. Yeah. Because crankbait gets fish that's not deep, yeah. but fish that's shallow. Yeah. 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 Let me get somebody today. You know why the enemy keeps using crankbait on you? It's because he knows you spiritually shallow. to get it attracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then if I don't use crankbait, what the time would I use a jig? Uh, 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 yeah, and a uh, jig yeah, is what I do if I want to catch some crappie or some bass, but I'll make it adapt to the water. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what I do with a jig is I don't fish it shallow. Mm -hmm. I throw the jig down deep. Yeah. And I'll drag it up. <laughs> because I know that some folk, the awesome folk, they even though they deep, yeah. they'll still fall for the G. Yeah. Yeah. 
when your wife ain't giving you nothing. I just can't understand why she don't respect a man like you. If you was my girl, if I had a man like that, spin a bait, then you fall for it. Then he, he hooks you. Lured and enticed. Watch this. If that don't work, what I'll do is I'll get a spoon. What a spoon is, yes. is yeah. I get right on top of the fish. Right. <laughs> if I got a depth finder, what I do is I'll drop the spoon yeah. in there and I can either pull it up fast yeah. Yeah. or I can pull it up slow. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. What's, what is so enticing about the spoon is its activity. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Carl, can I just go ahead and keep it real? Go ahead. The spoon wobbles. Y'all go ahead. The spoon wobbles up, and that's what attracts fish. And can I just suggest something to you? Some folk are attracted to the wobble. That's what Satan does. Satan throws it out there. And you know what it's saying to that spoon? Can I be real with you? Wobble, baby, wobble, baby. Get in there. Because he knows there are some fish that's attracted to the wobble. When he's drawn away of his own lust and in touch. I got him now. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, whether it be spinnerbait, whether it be a jig, whether it be a spoon, you got to know. What your own lust is. Yeah. So you gotta recognize uh -huh. what entices you. A lot of decisions you'll make has been what drags you, what draws you, what attracts you. She said, but her thing, if you fall for it, you're hooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And some folk here today. I said, I'm just going to take one drink. Somebody said, I'm just going to smoke one line. I'm just going to try sex this one time. I'm just gonna watch this porno movie one time. I'm just gonna go out to lunch with her. I'm just gonna have happy hour. And you find yourself in somebody's basket. Somebody's cooler. Somebody's boat because you weren't real about your own lust. He said, "You're watching. Watch this. You also got to realize the life cycle." Look what James said. That's right. He says, "And once you're hooked, here's what happens. You have a conception. It's conceived." But then it's birthed. Look at the life cycle. And then it grows. But it ultimately leads to death. So you got to know the strategies 
of the enemy. You got to know your own self, but you also got to be realized, even though it looks attractive, the end result is dead. We're familiar with that, isn't it? Isn't that what Adam and Eve, God told Adam and Eve, the day you eat of it. I wish I had some Bible readings here. He said, surely yeah. die. Now, they didn't drop dead. Yeah. But some folk got hooked. And it's costing your marriage. Yeah. Death. Yeah. Some God folk got hooked and it cost you your job. Yeah. Some folk got hooked and it cost you your family relationship with your mama and your dad. Yeah. Some folk got hooked and it cost you your health. Your fitness, yeah. your fortune, yeah. your family. Because yeah. you didn't do what James said. You let yourself get entangled uh -huh. because of what drew you. Because the reality is, Satan knows exactly what you like. Yeah. He's going to survey the lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what he's going to do is he's going to find out what, what you bite. He's going to find out what attracts you. And you know what they're going to do? He's going to keep going into his tackle box. Until he find out what works. And then once he find out what works, he'll use it every time. That's why you keep wondering, why do I keep falling? Why do I keep doing this same thing? Why do I keep falling for these same kind of tricks? Because it works. He said, here's what you gotta do. He said, if you're gonna avoid entanglement, you gotta recognize, realize that there's a difference between a test and a temptation. And even in the midst of your test, when God allows you to go through it, don't use that as a source for sin. Because it's easy to do. But you also got to realize what draws you. If, if, if it's a little drink every now and then, maybe you don't need to sit at the bar. Maybe when you go to the restaurant, they say, well, we ain't got no seating, but... You can sit at the bar, it's open seating. <laughs> now, if you know alcohol is your problem, you need to wait on the table. I'm done when I tell you this. I have a 1984 Honda Accord. It was a nice little car. I think Hondas last forever, but this this Honda I had, it broke down. Mm. Let me tell you why. Because when I was when I was when I was driving one day, it was in Arlington. And I was trying to get from forward to Arlington. I had an apartment. I was trying to get to my destination. What happened, Sister Thompson, is is while I was driving. My indicator light came on and said that my engine was running hot. I didn't want to stop and deal with it. I slowed down a little bit, stopped going so fast. Thought I could make it to my destination. I came into Arlington, I was just a few miles from my destination. It went way over where it was saying hot. I didn't stop. I didn't stop to deal with it. Then finally, about a mile or less from my destination, it quit on me. It stopped on me. Had to go tow it to a mechanic. Yeah, yeah. And the mechanic told me, Dr. Watson, that you blew a head gasket. Oh, no. yeah. He said, Why you were you running it? 
while it was hot. <laughs> he said, you might as well jump this because the engine is no good. Well, it'll cost you more to fix it than to buy something new. And that's when the Lord began to speak to me. He said, Tim, you know what your problem is? You didn't deal with your hotness. And because you didn't deal with the heat, you stopped short of your destination. I'm talking to somebody right now. God is telling you, you're running hot. Pull over. Stop. He can't go to your destination. And he's saying, that's why things are dying. That's why my car died. It's because I wasn't effectively dealing with the heat. Now, if you're here today and you say, you know what? I gotta be honest, Pastor Fuller. I'm in an entanglement right now. That's right. And I realize what got me into it yeah. is because my own, it wasn't the devil. Mm -hmm. It was my own lust, my own desires that got me into that. If you hear today, as a musician plays, you know, this is our invitation. And you've been trying, if you're here today and you don't even know Jesus, you've been trying to deal with your heat in many different ways. I'm going to give you an invitation today. That if somebody that can deal with it, you tried this, you tried that, but here's the reality. The reason it's hard to deal with is because that sin nature that you have. Yes, sir. All right. You were born with it. The Bible says you were born in sin and you were shaped in iniquity. All right. That's why you ain't got to teach a child how to do wrong. They know how to do wrong by themselves. Right. That's why you ain't got to teach a child how to lie. They know how to lie because they came equipped with it. In order for you to deal with and tangle with temptation, what you got to do is you got to have Jesus give you a new heart. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus give you a new nature. Yeah. And that comes by having a relationship with him. I'm going to ask you to do something. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, if there's never been a time in your life where you say, you know what? I acknowledge my sin and my sin is ever before me. I've been living this kind of life. And you say, you know what? I go to church. But there's never been a time in my life when I committed myself to Jesus. If you're here today, I'm asking you to come forward. Another invitation is this. Would you please stand? Please. The other invitation we give is this. If you're here today and you say, yeah, Pastor, I'm saved. I don't have a church home. And I've been praying about this. And I believe that if you, if God is moving you to be a part of this church, part of St. John Missionary Baptist Church, I know I'm not, not by myself to say you need glad to Let me tell you this. When you join a church, don't think that this is a perfect church. Perfect church, the minute you join, you will no longer be perfect. We are people that God is working on. Many of us still get caught up into some entanglements. Some things that's drawn and dragged us away. But here's the thing. What we do with this church, we'll love you. We'll pray for you. We help you guide you through it. Amen. So as the praise as the choir sings. Would you please, if there's anybody here, would you please come?